Right, let's get another guest on, and um, author James Murphy is back with uh, Dark Light, which is uh, part three, and also the thrilling conclusion to the Terror Trilogy. And I'm pleased to say James joins us now on the line. James, how are you, sir? Hi, James. I'm fine, Robin. How are you? Very well, thank you. So I believe it's been about uh, two years since uh, we last had you in the studio talking about uh, the first uh, terror novel. Yeah, it's a long time ago now. It certainly seems that way. You're now on the third book. Uh, for people who don't know the story, tell us a little bit about uh, the leading man, uh, Mark Shaw. What's his story? Mark Shaw is... Um well, he, he starts off life in the book as a, a, a head teacher in a school. Um, and his uncle is, is brutally murdered. And he was very close to his uncle, so he takes on a, a crusade to find, find the killer. And along the way, in hurts uh, a private detective agency from said uncle called Forest Investigations. And the, the, well, the investigation of his uncle's death then takes him on to the path of... Uh, a fledgling serial killer and a, a, a dangerous cult movement. So Mark has gone on this incredible journey throughout books one and two. Where are we now with book three, Dark Light? Well, as far as Mark Shaw is concerned, he, the book opens with him in the US on holiday in Boston, essentially licking his wounds and, and trying to, to recuperate from a series of, of huge traumas, much of which caused by by the, the serial killer terror. Um, whilst there, he receives new, well, some devastating pieces of news. First of all, um, that some bodies have been found in Belfast, particularly one in the, on, the, on the Black Mountain, which is suspected to be terror. Um, and the, the other um, is that his best friend and his best friend's niece have been seemingly um, in a car crash or certainly have found that found themselves at the bottom of a, a reservoir in, a, in Boston as well. Now, the, the reason I say that the, the first bit of the news is devastating for Shaw, you would think obviously terror being dead would be a good thing for him. But when you suspect that you're the killer, then things change. <laughs> and bodies turning up aren't particularly what you want. <laughs> so the thing that I really enjoyed about uh, the first uh, couple of books was when you got to the end, you were dying to know what happens in the next one. So what about uh, book number three now? Are you going to leave it open for another book or uh, will we come to some kind of uh, shocking conclusion at the end? The ending will definitely shock, but yeah. obviously with the conclusion of a trilogy, there needs to be some kind of conclusion. There needs to be some kind of veil drawn. Um, but I don't want to give too much away other than to say farce investigations will continue in some form. Um, but yeah, there will be the usual shock factor at the end. The thing about these books, you, you can actually read them as a standalone. You don't need to read them in order because they make sense. Actually, that was something, obviously when you write you know, when you write for the first book, it's always going to be a standalone anyway. But when you know that there are two more parts to come, you have to be quite careful as to how you structure it. Um, so I realised that quite early on into the second book. And what I then did was looked at ways where you could retell little bits of the story of the first, um, but make it relevant to any you know any new reader that that's literally just picked up the the, the second. Um, I also tried to make it that it would whet their appetite enough to think, well, I wonder what happened there, you know, so they would maybe think, well, maybe I'll read the first one now. And hopefully even, you know, if somebody, if somebody lifts dark light, it'll be enough to, to make them think, now I want to read the other two books in this, in this series now. Now, most of uh, Dark Light was written during the lockdown period, wasn't it? It was. Um, well, actually, I tell a lie. I started... Um, I started writing it almost immediately after the, the second one was launched, which was in April 2019. Um, and it was a, a slow, laborious process. And I kept using being too busy as an excuse and, and lots of things as an excuse as to why it was so slow. Um, and then lockdown came. 
And I thought, well, I don't really have an excuse now because I'm stuck in the house. I'm not really doing anything other than homeschooling. Um, that's not taking up all my time. So I'm going to have to get into it. Um, and when I did and was going through the manuscript so far, I realised that the reason it was going so slow was, frankly, because it wasn't very good. Right. Um, so I literally thought, well, if, if it's not leaping off the page for me and it's not impressing me, then there's something wrong. And if it's the final book in a trilogy, then it, it really has to pack a punch, you know, to live up to. And I, I'd known by that stage that the other two books were getting really good reviews. So um, I didn't want to disappoint anyone. Yeah. So essentially, I took huge swathes of, of the, the manuscript out and developed it a little bit more and, and essentially rewrote the entire manuscript. Wow. So lockdown was actually quite good for me in that sense, that it, it made me confront what what wasn't working. Now, I was in uh, No Alibi's bookstore in Belfast uh, recently, and uh, one of the things that struck me was the amount of uh, crime writers that there are coming out of Belfast. Uh, you're now this big, uh, massive community who are all writing away like crazy, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. And it, it's actually quite strange in the sense that we have... There are lots of us out there who are all at various stages in our career, but we are, we're one big community. I mean, for example, tomorrow night, there are several of us who have launched books in the last few weeks, um, and tomorrow night we're having a virtual cocktail party to celebrate that. Wow. So, you know, we're, no matter what stage you're at in, in, your, in your crime writing career, we're all really supportive of each other. Um, I mean, we have, from, from, from top down, for example, we have... Steve Kavanagh, who is enjoying huge success at the moment. He's probably um, a leading light in crime fiction worldwide, let alone, you know, Northern Ireland. Um, and then obviously we have others, I suppose, coming through and, and emerging with, with myself being, being hopefully one of those. Um, so we're, yeah, we're, we're flying the fly quite well, I think. Was it scary taking the plunge to write your first book? Because... You did give up your teaching career, didn't you? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, I was, at, much like Mark Shaw at the start of the book, I was a head teacher in a school as well. Um, and I was a teaching head teacher. And actually being a teacher and being a head teacher are both very difficult jobs. And trying to do both at the same time was just becoming unbearable, frankly. Um, I'd also just become a parent. Yeah. So... It was a time for me thinking about change and what am I going to do to affect that change and, you know, developing my career. And the writing kind of started as a hobby. So it was a way of actually de-stressing, to be honest. Um, but it has, it has continued from there and progressed from there. And happily so, I have to say. Although I haven't, I have to stress, I haven't moved completely away from education. Yeah. Um, I work for Edge Hill University training teachers now. So, but that's part time and it gives me a chance to focus on, on other projects as well. Talking about um, other projects, uh, you're helping uh, young and upcoming writers now as well. You're doing these uh, writing courses, aren't you? Yeah, um, it started out, I suppose, as a way of me trying to, to be honest, overcome the idea that maybe I wasn't cut out to be a writer or maybe there were better people out there to do it. And, and you know the whole idea of imposter syndrome yeah. um and i thought well actually you know i need to go and test the water and and i went back to my roots i suppose and thought well if you're good enough to write the books yourself then you're good enough to teach others to do it. Yeah. um and that's actually that's been brilliant for me in the sense that it has affirmed my belief in myself as a writer but also the amount of people that i've brought on who are i mean there are some fantastic crime fiction novels in development at the moment and that has developed actually in, in talking about the crime fiction writing community that's developed a whole new community for me because you have almost the next generation there who would for example we have a, a, a whatsapp group and um, where people would frequently put in you know i've had this idea for a book or I've started writing this or what do you think and they're all critiquing each other and and kind of spurring each other along so for me it, it's it's been a, a a really rewarding thing to do in lots of ways. So Dark Light is out now. Are you going to be taking a break from writing or is there another book in the pipeline? 
There's another book already started. Um, <laughs> and by complete chance, I mean, the, the crime fiction classes, I, I, I set them writing exercises and they're, they're busy doing them and I give feedback and so on. And one particular evening while they were working, I just had this epiphany moment of um, an idea for a book. And I thought, okay, that, that has to be written now. Um, and original, originally it was going to be the, the third Farset book, so the, the first post-terror book. Um, but I then teamed up with, a, with a, a friend and colleague in the writing community to deliver an online course um, with them. And some of the exercises they were using, I did a demonstration. Um, and actually that helped that book to, to reach the next stage. So it has, I suppose, developed a little bit and is now going to be a standalone. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of a break from Farshut to write that. Um, but it will still be set in Northern Ireland and it will be fairly similar style. Um, but yeah, a, a very different project. So where can you get your hands on a copy of Dark Light? At the moment, it's on pre-order with my publisher, Excalibur Press. Um, it will also soon be available in local bookshops such as No Alibis and Secret Bookshelf and also, failing that, Amazon. James, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, the best of luck with uh, the next book as well. Thank you. So there we go. We have to get our hands on a copy of uh, Dark Light. Get reading that now, won't we? I cannot wait, Robin. All right. That's all we have time for.